Hi, it's Jan Beta, and about a year ago now I made a series about some computers that had been stored in a flooded basement in Germany. And actually I have another computer that got stored in the very same basement that I want to take a look at today. For various reasons this got delayed for quite a bit and I hope there's no serious corrosion that went on while I had this sitting on the pile of shame of restorations. It is an Amiga 500 and it is in a pretty poor state as you can probably imagine. So let's see what we can do. So here it is. Uh, this is exactly in the state I got this in. So it has a protective cover on it. I'm still going to put on some gloves to handle this. I didn't look at this at all at this point. Hopefully this is still uh, savable. It looks pretty nice underneath the cover, obviously. As with the other machines, it probably got uh, dripped water on it from top side. It's an Amiga 500 standard one. I think uh, it has a little switch here and there's also a disc in here. Interceptor. Let's take a closer look. It is in rather nice condition I think. It has some dirt on here that's just dust I think. The keyboard is pretty yellow so probably that's a good idea to retro bright this slightly. The case is not as yellowed but still slightly yellowed. Looks pretty good from the bottom side as well. Some dirt on here as you might have expected. Toggle switch might be for a RAM expansion that might be under this trapdoor. So let's take a look inside this trapdoor at first I guess. Ah there we go okay that's the memory expansion. I hope there's no battery on here. Unfortunately there seems to be a battery on here still. I can see some crystallized battery acid here. Which is not really acid, it's basic. Going to have to do some work on that. I'm going to open up the whole thing though, because this is connected to the switch. The warranty seal is obviously broken because somebody had to install the switch here. There is some, I don't know, some lacquer over this screw to seal it again, I guess. Otherwise, it seems pretty nice. So we are obviously going to have to take this fully apart, clean all the parts. You can also see some dirt on this disc here. So this clearly had some water leaking inside, unfortunately. I'm going to break all the seals. I'm not going to remove the RAM expansion yet. I'm going to do that once I have this apart, I guess. Let's remove all the screws that hold the case together at first. There's three screws here and I think three more screws on the back side. There's another seal on the center screw here that also has been broken before, but not as badly as the other one. So all the screws are removed. We should be able to open this up. So the case should now open up. It's slightly clipped in on the sides, I believe. There we go. It was kind of stuck together. Okay, we see some rust. Case looks okay-ish from the inside, but some rust spots are here. So, yeah, I'm going to remove the keyboard. You can see that there's quite some rust on the parameter here. Keyboard looks in rather nice shape, given that this was in a flood. We're still going to have to take this fully apart. And as I suspected, there's a battery on this memory expansion. Doesn't look that bad. There's quite a bit of dirt in here. Uh, I'm going to remove the memory expansion at this point. So we're going to have to take a look at that. Thankfully this has a pin header here for the switch. And there's a little piece of the case that just fell out. So yeah, we're going to see where that goes later. In order to remove the shielding, I'm going to need a Torx screwdriver. This size... No, it's a smaller one. Yay! 
And the shield is also uh, held together with these bent tabs. So we're going to have to remove all the screws and bend the tabs to remove it. There's this bracket for the expansion slot on the side here to protect that and to ground things, I guess. These are my tabs, I think. Let's see if we can remove the shielding. Yeah, yeah, it is a bit dirty. As you can see, we have some rust on the cable here that connects the disk drive. We're going to take a closer look at the disk drive as well because the mechanics might have gotten wet. Uh, otherwise, it does look in rather nice condition. It's a revision 6A that can be upgraded to one megabyte of RAM internally, which is pretty nice. We are going to take this fully apart, take out the disk drive, take out the whole circuit board and then give everything a good wash at first, I think. So the drive uh, is screwed in from the bottom of the case, I think, and also on the side here. Oh, there's another loose bit in there. Oops. Okay, that's a bigger chunk. <laughs> we might need to glue that back somewhere. One screw here. Two screws, three screws on the bottom. Now the drive should be completely loose. Yes, it is. And I'm just going to remove the cables from the circuit board. Yeah, this definitely is a bit dirty. And now the whole circuit board should come out, I guess. Yeah. With the shielding. And this is only clipped in now. Or so I think. This is also rusted. <coughs> okay, this definitely got wet to quite some extent. It has some rusty spots on here, but I think it's nothing that we can't clean off. I'm more concerned with making the circuit board work. Yeah, I'm also going to remove the switch. This already is super loose. There we go. So, yeah, all the case parts are just going to go into the sink, or rather, my shower, and get a good scrubbing and a good soak. I hope I can clean off all this uh, rust. And I just realized where this bigger chunk that we found came off. It's this part here, around the drive. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video at this point, which is PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They also have other services like 3D printing and things like that. You may want to check out the link in the video description. I can highly recommend them. They offer excellent quality PCBs and their other products are also of excellent quality. Their service is super friendly and helpful and Delivery times are super quick. Go check them out. Back to the restoration. So all these plastic case parts are just going to get a nice wash in the shower. So I'm going to let this stuff soak in some water with some dish soap and some window cleaner in it and also a portion of degreaser, general purpose kitchen degreaser. So let's see what we get. I'm just going to leave this in here for a couple of hours maybe and then scrub everything thoroughly and carefully because the plastic seems to be super brittle. So I'm going to try my best to not damage this any further. Okay, let us take a look at the circuit board while we're at it. And in order to remove the circuit board from this bottom shield, we are going to have to remove all these screws on the back side here, which uh, hold the connectors in place. So these all have to come out, I'm afraid. Let's 
And now in theory, my circuit board should just come out. Yep. And it looks rather pristine from the back side. That's nice. And there's a bit of dust on the top side, but we're going to be able to clean that off. Uh, the bottom shielding and this insulating plastic sheet are in a bit of a rough condition. So we're going to clean these in some water as well. I'm going to put this in the sink and carefully let some water flow over it and then finish off with some distilled water and some alcohol to remove the tap water because that can lead to a further corrosion. And as for this memory expansion, I am going to remove the leaky battery from here by just clipping it off. It also seems to be hot glued in place. Definitely has to go. <laughs> the terminals have kind of corroded. Yeah, Ugh, yuck. Okay, this goes away. This is going to get some cleaning because there's some dirt on here as well, obviously. But there doesn't seem to be any severe corrosion on this one. This is an aftermarket memory expansion, no original Commodore one. It has the clock chip. This is the Oki clock chip that's on most of these memory expansions and the RAM chips. And then there's a little circuit for the clock. The battery is only to keep the time in the real time clock. So we don't really need that for the memory expansion to operate. In theory, if this operates at all, all these chips are socketed. So that is going to make it a bit easier to replace stuff if it doesn't quite work. I'm not sure if I have those memory chips, uh, which are 44256 RAMs, supposedly 512K. I'm not sure if I have those in stock, but uh, yeah, we're going to see. Usually these are pretty reliable unless they get battery corrosion. I am going to remove all that corrosion that I can see, which is mostly on the battery terminals. So. Yeah, this is going to get a wash as well with the main board. Welcome to the rather messy beta kitchen. So I'm just going to give the circuit board a good scrubbing with some dish soap and some water from the tap. Lukewarm water. Usually this works fine. It might seem brutal. <laughs> But there's really no parts that are not waterproof, at least to some extent, on these boards. So most of the times, this just works rather well. If you rinse it carefully afterwards. As I've said before, an ultrasonic cleaner would be the proper way of doing this. But, uh, as I've read in some books, Commodore used to use dishwashers to clean these. I don't have a dishwasher, so I'm using the manual dishwashing method here. Uh, yeah. Let's see how this turns out. As I said, I'm doing the same with the little memory expansion. And afterwards, I'm going to rinse everything with distilled water and alcohol thoroughly and then let it dry. I'm just going to use copious amounts of alcohol to rinse it. Mmm, smells good. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's time to let this dry and then we're going to see if we can make this work again. I might pull the chips and clean them individually, same for the sockets. But at this point, I think we got the mud off at least. After a lot of scrubbing, 
I got these to a point where I just want to leave them to dry, the case parts, and I'm going to scrub the shielding. And I'm basically using the same method. I'm just going to submerge these for a bit. Okay, I'm also going to have to take the keyboard fully apart using my keycap puller here and I'm going to pull all the keycaps. And I have one container here for the keycaps and one for the little springs that are underneath and the metal brackets that are under some of the larger keys. So yeah, this looks pretty yummy. I guess it was dirty before this got into the flood. I'm going to clean these uh, plastic parts and the metal parts separately. These are going to get some soapy water for now. These are going to get some alcohol and some WD-40, I think. I think I also want to take this whole uh, front plate off. There's a metal bezel actually with a lot of screws that we can undo to remove this and see the membrane underneath, which also might have some damage from the flooding. So I'm going to remove all the screws from this and clean this plastic part and these plastic parts and the metal ones. Everything! Removing a million screws. Also going to clip this cable tie that holds the circuit board and this a plastic shield together and the cable for the keyboard. So this has to be cleaned as well. I'm going to clean the circuit board. So this now should lift out. And there's our plungers. So we obviously need another container for the plungers. So the plungers go into this container. I'm going to clean those individually. I'm going to disconnect this from the circuit board. So this has one of these locking uh, membrane connectors. And this just comes out. Circuit board should now be totally free. This also needs a good wipe. I'm also going to remove this LED from the caps lock key and put it somewhere safe. So the metal part is just going to get a good wipe down with some window cleaner from both sides. And I'm using a microfiber cloth here to hopefully get most of the dirt out. It's also slightly bent, but I'm going to even that out by hand. Yeah, that's already better. So the membrane is going to get a bit of isopropanol and a very careful wipe down because there are carbon printed contacts on here that can easily rub off. But there are some stains in between that I want to get rid of. So hopefully this is going to do something. I'm also going to be very careful with the connector there. And usually this works fine in my experience. I've cleaned quite a few of these membranes in the exact same way. I'm also going to do the same with the flip side. And there's where the actual uh, connections are. So you want to be careful with that as well. And I'm finishing off uh, this side with a slight spray of contact cleaner because in my experience that usually helps 
conductivity of these pads. I'm using a super non-corrosive contact cleaner here. Teslanol Oscillin T6. You can use some of the deoxid products. Just going to spray some on a cloth here. And doing all of these contacts. And there's some of the carbon is coming off, obviously. But that should be nothing to worry about. I'm not applying a lot of force here, just gently wiping these. That should be clean. You don't have to be very careful with this part. That's just an insulating sheet for the circuit board on the keyboard assembly. There we go. The keyboard PCB also gets some alcohol and a good scrubbing. Also, of course, this connector. But this looks relatively clean, thankfully, so I'm not too worried about this. I'm going to spray some contact cleaner into the connector as well. I'm just going to leave it at that. This should dry. So the circuit board turned out rather nicely after washing it, literally. I'm going to spray some contact cleaner into all of the sockets after removing the chips and uh, reseat them. And I'm also going to do some additional cleanup work with some Q-tips on this, I guess, uh, to make sure this is super clean and all the sockets make good contact. This one. These are the shoddiest sockets, so maybe... This is actually a pretty common fault on these Amigas. The sockets are super cheap. That's a common failure. The sockets actually do look super clean. That's a nice touch. And so do the chips, so... There's not much damage that happened here, thankfully. I'm not going to try to pull the Agnes chip, which is in this PLCC socket. Um, these are notorious for failing. Just going to push down on it slightly and spray some contact cleaner in to hopefully ensure this makes good contact. But these sockets fail very, very frequently. So uh, also the other sockets on the Amigas. Commodore used cheap sockets. That's the reason why that is such a common fault on the Amigas. Uh, just sockets not making good contact. Yeah, I think that's about all I want to do to this main board. I'm going to clean some spots that I missed with some Q-tips and some alcohol. But I think I got most of the dirt off here. Even the connectors look pretty good, actually, so I'm going to clean those with the brush again. But nothing much to worry about, I would guess. There's actually some band pins on this one. So I'm going to try to get them a bit straighter again. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, I'm going to do some more cleaning on this and then I'm going to try to test this. And as for the battery leakage, that is slightly visible here. And on the back side of the board, I'm going to use some vinegar on a Q-tip to uh, neutralize the basic battery leakage. I'm going to put some white vinegar on there and let it soak in for 10 minutes or so and then wipe it off with some alcohol. But this looks in relatively nice shape. Probably going to do the same as with the main board and uh, reseat the socketed chips to spray some contact cleaner into the sockets. Got myself some vinegar. Got a Q-tip soaked in vinegar. I'm just going to 
generously put this on the spots that had corrosion. I'm just going to let this soak in for a while and then remove the remains with alcohol. That's sunk in for a good while. Let's see. Yeah, I think that trace is corroded through, but that's okay. Don't need the battery on this, really. There's some corrosion that got into the circuit board, I think. I think I want to use my glass fiber pan to clean that off. It shouldn't be a big issue on this one. That should do, really. I don't see any remaining green spots, so probably we got the corrosion off there. Now to lift all the chips and spray a contact cleaner into the actual contacts on the sockets. I hope these lift a little easier. Yep, they do. <laughs> yeah, and this looks super clean, actually. This looks as good as new. Hopefully it works as good as new. We're going to find out shortly if the main board works at all. <laughs> there we go. That's one cleaned up memory expansion. Yeah, uh, impatient as I am, I kind of want to try if this board works at all at this point. So I hooked up a power supply, I hooked up my upscaler to the monitor and the Amiga to the upscaler or the Amiga board. And I'm just going to try to give it some juice to see what it's going to do. It should start up with a gray screen that turns white and then it should take a while until the Kickstart logo appears that asks for the disk because it's looking for a floppy disk drive and there's no drive in there, obviously. So let's see what it's doing. Cross your fingers. This could totally work first try. This could be broken from previously. I don't know if this Amiga worked before I got it, before it got into the flood. Let's see. Gray screen, white screen, that's a good sign. Let's see if we get any further. Do we get the disc logo? Come on, you can do it. Yes! <laughs> it's working, at least thus far. So uh, I'm going to do some more in-depth testing of this later on, once I got the floppy disk drive refurbished or cleaned up at least. So uh, yeah, that is very promising. Now for the fun part of cleaning the remaining parts of the case. <laughs> wow. And I'm going to use some vinegar on that rust later on, I think, to fully stop the corrosion. <laughs> and the water turned kind of yellow, obviously. And now for the endless fun of cleaning each individual keycap with a toothbrush. And I want these as clean as possible. Especially since I plan on retrobriting this thing. So these are going to dry, usually takes a couple of hours. Usually I leave them just like this overnight so they can fully dry. Then we're going to take the next step. 
And at this point, there's going to be a bit of a cliffhanger because I decided to split this video up into two parts. In the next episode, we are going to see some case repairs and some serious retro writing efforts and also recapping of the main board. I'm also going to take a look at the floppy disk drive and see if that can be resurrected. So stay tuned on this channel for the next video, which is going to follow next week. Hope you enjoyed this one hope it was informative and entertaining as usual thank you so much for your support on patreon and on the channel memberships page here on youtube and also for your single donations on ko-fi and paypal and elsewhere very much appreciated hope to see you again on this channel thanks for subscribing thanks for your comments and thanks for your thumbs whichever direction they go i'm jan beta thanks for watching see you next time bye